Same defensive coordinator, so it's very similar. Uh, you know, I think last year we caught them off guard. We came in and, uh, you know, they were expecting us to run and we threw the ball. And, uh, you know, we'll find out what happens this week. <laughs> A lot of good tape to look at, though, yeah, from last year. Yeah, there, there is. There's a lot of good tape to look at last year and this year. Uh, they played some tough tough people. Now. You know, Tyler coming off a couple of games he's had, you know, confidence-wise, I mean, Kentucky game last year was one of his better games. you think there's something to that, that he can draw some experience from that game being there? And I'll let you know if practice. <laughs> it's one of those deals. Yeah. Uh, see how he practices and see how he goes through. But how's he, how's he been the last you know, week in the he's bye week good. and getting he's everything He's ready? been good. You know, we've, we've, we've kept him out of a couple of things, get bumps and bruises healed up, make sure that that's healed up for the – the game, I think that's critical. Is it interesting, challenge because you've dealt with guys that maybe were gunslingers or guys that you know you tried to get to see what's happening. Now you got a guy that maybe sees too much, thinks too much a little bit, like a Tyler, like that. In a way, it's, it's easier to correct almost. Well, I mean, I don't know what I don't I don't quite gather your question about seeing too much. I mean, he, you know, he's he's been doing what we asked him to do. He's been pretty consistent. Uh, you know. Uh, Things we got to do is just execute. You know, I mean, I think that's the big key. It comes down to putting the guy, putting the ball in people's hands, and making it happen. Yes, what I was getting at was what Dan said last week. About Tyler was looking for the, maybe the grand slam when there was a, a good, just a clean base hit there and open right in front of him. Yeah, you know, at times, and that's you know, for a, for a quarterback, that's a, you know, got to learn to check the ball down. But uh, you know, I think there was some opportunities there, and I, you know, I think last week we just didn't quite click. You know, it just wasn't in one position. There was a couple of them. That, we didn't click, and we got to be able to, you know, the last three games before that, we clicked pretty good, and we just got to make sure we hit it on all cylinders. You know, it's a big think, game. Do you think Perkins is probably the most consistent player for you guys so far offensively? Anybody want to join us? Game in and game out? You know, I, I, I'd have to go look. I'd have to go look on the grades to make sure, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I think he graded out really well last week. You know, did a nice job. So, you know, uh, the, the thing is we're having the ability to spell him at times, which really keeps his, his, his uh, I guess, his best shot on the field. I guess what I'm trying to say is it seems like every game he's, he breaks off one long run when he needs well, I hope he keeps doing that. I yeah. mean, that, that's a good sign. <laughs> we'll let you know we're fixing to get the SEC play. I hope that continues on. I really did. So, Les, what in the world are the Kentucky offensive coaches thinking right now at the start of true freshman? You've been in that position oh, before. Well, I mean, th those guys are close friends of mine. They're really good football coaches. They'll have something lined up. If you remember last year, uh, they played Tennessee, you know, and, yeah. and they came in there and did an outstanding job. Right. And, uh, you know, is there a basic checklist of things that have to get done when you're going to do that, though? Well, I think the, the thing you got to be really – is what they can do. Don't don't get caught up in the X's and O's schematically. Of you're creating an advantage under, and, and they know this. That right. whatever he can do is what they're going to do. And you know, Randy's a real close friend. Randy's a really good football coach. Uh, you know, and those guys are, are, are good football coaches. They're gonna, they're going to do whatever he can do and, and try to move the football. You have to get a great start, I mean, because you never know what can happen in the end. So if you start off fast, you can get them down fast, and it's going to be hard for them to get back up. What is it like? I mean, you've been to, I mean, I see some games are obviously, and it's nothing new to you, but it's the first one for a lot of these guys. You know, what, what is it going, what's the preparation going on for this game then? you got to just make sure, you don't, don't don't let the crowd, like, spook you a lot. I mean, they're going to have, have a great crowd out there. You just got to make sure you play the, up to your level and, and stay focused always. No matter uh, if you're on the sideline or you're in the game, make sure you stay focused and, and and everything else will fall in place. Did y'all get a chance to look at them this way? They were y'all were off. They were playing. Did you get a chance to see what they did? Yeah, I got a chance to watch them um, playing against South Carolina. They had a pretty fast start against South Carolina, uh, but South Carolina picked it up and came back and won. But um, you just, you just cannot take Kentucky lightly. I know they they they're not been, they have not been winning that many games um, the past few years, but you can't look at that or whatever because um, Kentucky is an SEC school. Um, that means they are a good school. So. I feel like we just got to make sure we go in there and stay stay positive, stay focused. Um, don't let anything distract us when we get there uh, and play our style of football. What, what, do they do, what do they do well? What can they challenge you on as facing them on defense? Um, far, they got some pretty good linebackers that we just got to make sure we keep our eye on. Um, D-line did a pretty good job also, and secondary. Uh, we just got to make sure that we execute like we're supposed to um, as far as um, throwing the ball also and running the ball well. And I, I know the O-line is going to block, block great. Um, they're going to do their job also. So we just make sure we just do our job and play our game, and uh, we can get to come out with a victory. Play, you know. And that's why I felt bad kind of at the end of the year because 
I knew I had three SEC corners and I could only play two at a time. And, you know, it was hard to take one. Once Corey got well, it was kind of hard to take him off the field. Yeah. You know, it was easy when his hand was hurt. How are, when we talk about guys, Banks, the Slay, obviously, but how are Calhoun and uh, Love coming along now? They're getting, you're, you're, you're working them in getting them their snaps now, too. Yeah, they are. Uh, we've had a chance to play them, and I think that's how you really tell if they can play corner when they get a chance to play in games. And I think they're moving forward. You know, uh, I re like I told you, yeah, I really love Calhoun and Love. You know, I just think that. Uh, uh, Progress to move forward, but you know you you only get better playing. And uh, but we've been able to play them in all four games, and I like that. You're able to get Giles out there, and you're one of those guys, like you said, that's a proven. You don't like playing true freshman corners a lot, but he earned his playing time. Oh yeah, it's unfortunate that Giles has uh, been kind of hindered some because he had really earned his stripes. I really like Giles a lot. You know, he's shown me he can play corner in a game. And he's competitive, and he wants to be good, and he has talent. There, there ain't a lot of negatives with him. He's mature. Well, plays are called. Yeah. You know, he is going as hard as he possibly can, and uh, you know, I'm excited about his progress. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, having come in here in the spring and gone through all that right. and preseason camp, is he kind of where you'd hoped he'd be? What's, what's he still yeah, got to work and on? Yeah, and he's still getting better. Every day you see him getting better in this last week, having the off week, right. you know, getting a lot of quality snaps versus our offense, you know, running with the ones, running with the twos. Yeah. Helped him a lot too. Do you see a, a learning level now from McKinney and Skinner that, I mean, obviously not just from experience, right. but now they're kind of picking up on stuff Cam has showed them and they're yeah. kind of almost – Obviously, he's still calling the plays, but right. they, they get more comfortable how they, they read plays they themselves. They are, and, and you just see them every, you know, Cam will have them in there together and watching tape together and showing them things that he looks at, and I think it's really starting to pay off. I think last two weeks, Deontay and Benardrick have each had about eight tackles each, you know, so they're they're doing really good, and, you know, the leadership that Cam provides uh, has been huge. Does it, offer, does it kind of help you, you know, get some of those young linebackers in and just kind of get them first team reps, you know, right. when you can kind of, you know, rest Cam and mm -hmm. stuff like that? Absolutely, you know, it was a, it was huge for us. And then you also got uh, Richie Brown and Beniquez Brown. You got to see them play a lot. And uh, you know, during preseason, you kind of have a really good feel about them being SEC linebackers. But this past off week, I mean, Richie and Beniquez, Zach Jackson, you know, down the road, they're going to be really good players. They're about where we thought they would be, okay. you know, as far as picking that up. Is is there a guy, you know, last week when you were working with, you know, essentially the twos that, that really kind of stood out and kind of proved that he wanted to get more touches, be on the field? Well, all three we tried to emphasize that, but uh, it was day to day, you know. Oh, okay. One day, uh, one guy would have a good day, and the other one wouldn't. The next day, another guy would have a good day, you know. So it went day by day with him. So the obvious question is, is that frustrating or encouraging as a coach when it's not consistent? Kind of frustrating. You, you, kind of frustrating because we're searching for consistency. You know, we want a kid to be consistent when he's on the field. So uh, hopefully uh, things will change this week and we can uh, show signs of uh, getting better and, and uh, being consistent about what we do. Is, is uh, off week, is that, does that help a running back, you know, just kind of just get his legs back under him, you know, not taking all those blows on Saturdays and stuff? Can you kind of get your legs back under you midseason? It helps. You know, we uh, we took some of the load off Perkins because we really wanted to look at the other three guys as far as the running back goes. So uh, we took some of the load off Perkins and really worked those other three to make sure they got quality reps and got better. Since you've been here, you know, some of your running backs have had some big games against Kentucky. Do you expect that to continue this year? We always expect every time we go out, we expect big games. We, we expect a big prize. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, Perkins. You know, this is kind of his chance to get his shot against Kentucky. I mean, I know he's played a little bit before, but, you know, he's going to be in the spotlight this week. Yeah, I mean, he's in the spotlight every week. So <laughs> things don't change for him. So we just try to adjust and, uh, again, make, make that a common place for us. All right, Darius, so y'all a little bit re-energized, refocused. I know motivation was a question the last couple of games, a week off, SEC game. Does that help? It helped, you know, get uh, um, our legs back on us. So uh, I know today we're going out to get, uh, to get better. And, you know, it's a short period this day. So uh, we're ready to go out there and um, try to um, get ready for Kentucky. I don't know if you've heard much about it, but it's going to be one of two freshman quarterbacks. Both of them are going to play. Um, one of them's gonna start. Is that kind of fresh meat in your eyes? Yeah, you know everybody you know, attack. You know, you know attack the freshmen because you know we got older guys. So uh, you know, I know coach will come up with a, uh, a package, you know, to confuse the quarterback because since they're young. So you know, we ready to uh, prepare for it. The guy that's out this week, Max Smith, was a freshman last year, and I believe he started that game, didn't he? 
Uh, kind of wondering what you remember about facing a freshman uh, that that week. If that helps you at all preparing for guys you don't know much about. You know, it's, it could be hard because you know there's too much film on them. But you know, we go find a way to somewhere uh, to come out with some film or something like that. Did you maybe go with some similar stuff you guys did with Auburn and Kyle Frazier? He was a sophomore, but mm -hmm. it was his first, you know, his first season starters only his second game. Yeah, you know, that's the same thing we did with Kyle Frazier. You know, pressure him. And you know he, you know we pressure. He, he, he uh, panic, you know, and it forced us to make big plays out there. So that was, I guess that's what I go is to do with uh, Kentucky. Well, when you came back here, you know uh, you had signed and then went to ICC and came back. And Melvin Smith says, you know, I look at him. I, I thought he might be a safety. So obviously you got recruited as a cornerback. But was there ever that thought that you know you might might drop back a little bit further in the in the defense there? Uh, a little bit, because uh, you know I was kind of big coming out of high school, right. but. You know, I just got bigger in the arms and all that. But, uh, you know, I came here, coached there. Yeah, I just want to keep that corner, so that's what I'm going to do. Did you, did, is that safety something you had thought about playing? Were you, were you, were you as comfortable there? I'm, I'm comfortable anywhere on the field. You put me there, I'm just going to do my job. I remember that some of you talked about you as a potential linebacker coming out of high school. No, never lie. I don't know about <laughs> linebacker. Oh, yeah. That's a little too big. Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't, I'll play it, though. They want me to. But with what... Uh, Melvin said that we got here, you showed him early last season that, you know, okay, he can do this. Uh, at what point did you feel really comfortable uh, as an SEC cornerback? Um, I felt comfortable, you know, after one day of practice, you know, he, he talked to me after practice and said, you know, you could be great. And uh, the next week I played Georgia and uh, I did had a big game. Yeah. You know, he came to me like, you know, you, you're an SEC corner. We got three SEC corners on the team. So he said, he's got to be a way to put us all on the field. So what he did this year, they finally put all three of us on the field. So that, that conversation you had with Melvin was the week of the Georgia game or the week before? Like the week before. Okay, mm. okay, okay. How big was that? Uh, you remember that spring scrimmage? You had three picks. Yeah. You almost should have had maybe five. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was a big scrimmage for me. You know, it, it put me out there a lot, you know. And, uh, you know, it put me in good uh, defense, put me in a uh, good position to make them plays. And uh, that was happening. You know, that was a great day that day. Do you ever have any fun with Broom about it? You know, I made you move, or does he say, oh, I just moved so you could play, so you owe this to me, you know, something like that? <laughs> no, nah, it'd be Broom, man. Broom, the, the most guy on the best guy on the field, man. He the most humble dude I know. You know, he stay focused. Even though he switched the corner, I mean, safety, you know, he steady kept his mind right and kept going 100% in everything he did. You play a field corner? Yeah, I play field corner. What, what makes you better suited for that than, say, boundary? Or could you play boundary? I mean, I, I, I like boundary the most because it's more small over there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just, I just it's just a blessing to be on the field with that boy. So it's just a good thing. You got to keep up the pace, get a pick this week? I'm trying to. I work hard for them every week, you know. How, how much does Banks being on that other side help you? I know we've talked about that before, but you feel like in another, in another way, too, you kind of earned respect for yourself mm -hmm. regardless of, what he's doing? Yeah, you know, I felt like I did, you know, leading the whole uh, second play, uh, second uh, place in the uh, nation interception. So, you know, I felt like I earned a lot, but uh, I still got to prove myself because, you know, we got a lot of SEC games coming up. You know, these are the big game conference. Yeah. And uh, so we got to prove our point. South Alabama threw at him a lot last game. Maybe a little surprising. Is that a result you think of people seeing you and realizing, okay, that guy's not good to throw on either? Yeah, I mean, it could be hard. Like I said, every time, you know, it's. We got four of the best second uh, players in the uh, nation. That was Nico and Nico uh, back there. It's, it's kind of hard. Did you ever have second thoughts about re-signing with State? Because by the time you were going to resign, you knew how good Banks and Broomfield and those guys were. I mean, everybody has second thought. You know, both of them coming in at the same age as me mm -hmm. and in the same class. It was hard just saying, "Hey, I'm about to go behind these boys and try to beat them." You know, they both were all American mm -hmm. freshmen. So you know, I had second thoughts, but you know, I trust my instincts. You know, came here, you know, just competed. And how much did it mean to you that state, by the same token, state loyal to you? Yeah, it mean a lot because you know they trusted me to come in, and uh, they thought I guess they knew they was gonna play me, so I felt good. I know my confidence is up. How do you think you're better as a player, maybe even as a person, by being able to go away, so to speak, and then come back? You know, it felt uh, good, good, good player. Cause uh, when I got here, you know, I was quiet. You know, I didn't want to talk, but now you know, type of a leader. You know, everybody look up to me. You know, I learned a lot from Banks. You know, they came more, you know, they came best with one of my best friends. And, you know, they taught me a lot. They just took me in as like a brother. Do you ever, you, Broom's from Florida, you're from Georgia, and Banks from Mississippi, do you ever, ever argue about who plays the best high school ball? Yeah, we all compete, you know. Broom always think his team got more speed than us. You know, I say we got the powerhouse. And, and uh, Banks think they say they're more athletic than us. But, you know, it's, we'll all find out one day. <laughs>
I know this is a little off topic from being in secondary, but uh, you've gone up against Malcolm Johnson in the past, and obviously he's been recovering from injury and done a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. and Coach Mullins talking about he might be back this weekend or pretty soon here. He talks about him as a mismatch. I mean, do you, you see that as a corner? Is he someone that's, that's tough to cover? Oh, yeah, he's very tough to cover. You know, I had a hard time covering him last year, so. You know, he's more like a receiver slot guy. He he go down and block sometimes. You know, he and he got good speed. He run the run the best routes, and you know he got one of the best. He got the, like the best hands on the team. You know, there ain't too many balls he go drop. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a little hard for somebody to guard him. Cause some guys might sit there and say, you know, here I am. These people getting nominated for all SEC and All American and stuff, and you know. all. But you know, talk to pro scouts. You're the one they're watching. Yeah, you know, I'm, it's a blessing. You know, I don't, you know, I ain't looking for too much attention because the uh, only thing I'm out there doing is, you know, I want to win. So that's what my goal is to go out there and beat the person in front of me because I know Banks will do his job. I know uh, Boyd will do his job. Nico, all of them. I just know they're going to uh, be 100% going in. Banks brags about his ability to play receiver, which he could do. You think he could cover him if he was a receiver? Yeah, uh, anybody put in front of me, I'm, go I'm going hard. I'm going to win. I got to win. <laughs> so anytime he want to match up, we can match up too.